Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. I am Claire Jones. I am an author, speaker, and mentor committed to creating a better world through inclusive stories and practices. And we are jumping on today for my Visionaries in Transition Facebook Live series, where I interview the amazing and inspiring impact makers in my network that we all experience transitions and we discuss the ones that have shaped our lives and businesses. So if you're joining us, please like, comment, share below. Let us know that you're here. And today I'm talking to Marta, who is with Mind, Body, and Purpose. I'm so glad to have you here today. Claire, thank you so much. I love your energy. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. It just lifted mine in the most amazing way. Thank so you. happy to be here. Yeah, I was actually talking to someone this morning about how it's like pretty much all energetics at the end of the day. It's yeah. like the energetics you produce, the energetics you absorb, like it's it's everywhere. <laughs> I just felt it and saw it in front of my eyes. 100% there you true. Go. There you <laughs> go. Well, let's dive into it. Tell me, how did you get to where you are today? Who? How did I get to here, uh, through a lot of chaos, a lot of survival, yeah. I was actually thinking about this today. And, uh, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, I was a uh, newly divorced single mom in New York City, one of the most expensive cities to <laughs> live in. I was uh, my, the company that I was running with my girlfriend was coming to an end. We weren't making any money. And I was like, okay, what do I do now? Uh, it felt pretty choiceless at that point mm. yet I managed to create some choices for myself mm. and I really went soul searching I uh, was at that point someone who really loved wellness loved working out and I decided that I am going to become a personal trainer mm. which sounded like the worst idea I was 35 maybe 36 uh, you know I had no influence in New York City like everyone was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, every model, five, five, ten model uh, at 21 is becoming a personal trainer. And here you are, five, one, a 36 year old woman. You have no, you stand no chance. Anyhow, mm -hmm. despite that, I invested in myself and took a six month course, uh, in person course uh, to become personal trainer. I went back and supported myself in a waitressing job while mm -hmm. getting that certification. And uh, it worked. I was so, so happy to switch my career. I've actually started making money. And that's how my journey really started of discovering how amazing it is to serve others, how beautiful it is to watch people overcome their limitations. Uh, and the rest is kind of history. Since I was making money in the business, I kept reinvesting in myself. I became nutritional coach and then a life coach. And uh, here I am 10 years later, um, not personally training Mm. actively I still have some clients from 10 years ago wow. <laughs> a few but uh, very happy in my uh, working as a life coach in a quite multi-dimensional company so mm. chaos and survival brought me here yeah I love that I love that because you know when we are bucking the status quo and doing something different than other people expect like I read a line in a book actually yesterday that was like if you continue being the person that you are you are always going to have people who misunderstand you who doubt you who just question everything that you're doing and make you doubt yourself as well and it's so important to have that awareness because you need to shore yourself up in the process. And I'm sure as you went through this process, you found a lot of people who were attracted to that non-traditional personal training service that you offered. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, fa that's funny that you said the word awareness. I felt at that point was probably just ignorance. Mm. <laughs> But, you know, it was blissful and it moved me forward. Like mm. I was not overthinking. Mm. I just was following my heart because in that 
choiceless situation i felt like that was the choice actually that could uh you know nourish me on many levels financial mm -hmm. level soul level emotional satisfaction level and and it's really i i just went blindly into it uh, and yeah and i no think regrets. that's <laughs> Using that self-fulfillment aspect of it to make these decisions in our lives is so countercultural. <laughs> because <laughs> so many people in our culture work from the outside in, not from the inside out. And that's what we're talking about here is like starting with our own fulfillment, our own sense of happiness and passion and excitement, and then building from there rather than trying to retroactively fit other people's expectations to our sense of fulfillment. Absolutely. And it kind of brings us back to energetics, right? Because if you have that energy of just from inside out, that is going to keep attracting and magnetizing and, and also nourishing you from mm -hmm. inside out. So you're not run into uh, that depletion that comes very often from the, the safe choices that we make. Totally. Yeah. One of my favorite metaphors that I've thought of for this kind of thing that we're talking about here is like using colors, like internally, I'm a purple person, you know, like my internal color is purple. For example, I'm just using examples here. But the world outside of me is telling me I should be blue. And so like purple is close enough to blue that I can probably succeed to some extent as a blue person. <laughs> but I can't reach the full success that I can as blue because I'm just fundamentally not blue. I'm purple. So I can That's only right. really achieve full success when I'm my full purple self and not pretending to be blue. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Such a beautiful metaphor. That's, that's, I love it. And, and, you know, purple for you, it's more fun than blue too. So why yeah. not have fun yeah. on your way yeah. to success? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what kind of like, what are the big transitions that shaped this journey along the way, either in life or business? For me, the, these transitions uh, <laughs> are very often these like big big changes in life that are uh, and that comes that come with fear right mm -hmm. so when I think about the, the number one transition is me being broke and jobless in New York City as a single mom right that is like a really uh, <laughs> kind of <laughs> scary situation uh the the next transition uh in my life was uh having my second child just when I started my own business, because for a while I worked for gyms as a, as a trainer, and I just had a small side business just when I decided to transition into fully becoming uh, my own business person, uh, then I found myself pregnant. Uh, so that was like, a oh, wait, <laughs> what's going to happen now? So that was a big transition that actually like really limited me for a second, mm -hmm. but then pushed me in, into much more growth because uh, mm -hmm. I, I was so ultra aware of that limitation and the mindset that I was uh, carrying. And the rest of my transitions, I think, come from a desire too. Like, mm -hmm. let me just talk about desires as well, not just the need to to survive and get yourself out of the fear. There is desire on the flip mm -hmm. side, and uh, you know, when I think uh, about my life right now and how I actually have been operating for about four years in my business. Uh, I had this dream that I don't want to be attached anymore to the location, right? To the location where I am right now in New Jersey. Uh, we spoke about it earlier. I have a dream of moving permanently to Costa Rica. And about four years ago, I decided to start moving my business completely online. Mm. Uh, and then 
COVID came <laughs> and I was already partially online and the transition went so smoothly for me. Mm -hmm. Some people went into that like, oh my gosh, how am I going to take my in-person business now and move it online? I was like, I, I have all the systems already. I'm, I'm, let's go, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's go people, uh, come and join me. Uh, so that this, the desire is also a driving force mm -hmm. on my transition. Mm -hmm. I want it, I will make it happen. Yeah, I love that it shows the evolution of your mindset too, when we talk about each of, this, each of these transitions that you've encountered over the years. Like, especially with the birth of your second baby, like you talk about your limitations and when we become truly aware of our limitations and truly look at them for what they are, we are allowed so much more creative freedom to then respond to them in a new way rather than our pre-programmed way of responding to limitations. Yeah. And that is such an important pivotal part to that evolution process of being like, all right, so instead of taking obstacles as obstacles, as limitations, as restrictions, can we look at them more as challenges? Can we look at them more as lessons? Can we look at them more as opportunities? And that's such a big mental shift that I think a lot of us go through. Yes, you know, they say obstacle is the way, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's often like, okay, so, so here's the obstacle what, how do I now, what do I do now? Where do I go from now? Instead of just thinking, okay, that's not going to be possible because mm -hmm. here is the obstacle number one, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's go that way. So yeah, this, I, I, I am so glad you caught it because this has been really a, a big evolution for me. And that's how I operate mm -hmm. really on most days right now mm -hmm. on most days there are some days where you still uh you know uh focus more on the on the issue than the solution but uh, but on most days i i look at what's not working what's stopping me what's what's limiting me and and work around it and and really make it into a growth opportunity mm -hmm. yeah i love that i love that like there was a guy that I was listening to in a speech last year, and he said something along the lines of like, you didn't fail, you succeeded spectacularly at learning a new thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because let's, let's be real. The growth does not happen in success, right? Totally. Like there is like success might be the result of growth but it's not really that's not where where the growth happens the growth would happen in those sticky moments when we just don't know what to do and how to come out and where everything is falling on top of us that's that's yeah. where we have the opportunity to grow really yeah. if we and I, and I think people don't realize that success still has obstacles <laughs> That like success true. doesn't mean that there's no problems yes yes <laughs> success doesn't mean that there's nothing going wrong at all you know success doesn't mean that everything is going according to plan because nothing goes according to plan ever even if it is like a success on paper it still didn't go according to the plan that you set for it in the first place and so I really do think that this tension that we experience between success and obstacles happening at the same time is where that growth happens yeah beautiful absolutely and and like you said success comes with its own you know fair share of challenges mm -hmm. and, and nothing really changes you just more successful yeah yeah but life oh. keeps on going uh I use this a lot. Uh, I work a lot with weight loss uh, clients, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I use this this metaphor a lot with with my women. I said to them, you know, when you lose twenty pounds, that's what it is. You lost twenty pounds, and your dress size is smaller, but you still wake up in the morning, and your children are going to still annoy you. You know, your boss might be mean to you. Uh, you're still going to run into the same, you still have to pay your bills, right? Like it's still kind of the same life. Yeah, you just yeah. 
lost 20 pounds you later that's it and and because i think we sometimes glorify right when mm -hmm. i am this x and y oh my gosh the life is going to be i'm like i'm gonna turn into a princess and just float right. so, yeah the happily no. ever after <laughs> yes no that's that's not true you it's still going to the same life <laughs> yeah yeah like you you literally took the words out of my mouth because I was going to talk about like how we have we're culturally conditioned to have this idea of like once I get to B everything will be fine once I get to X mm -hmm. all of my problems will be over you know and yeah. that's such a myth <laughs> it's such a myth absolutely and what a disappointment oh yeah <laughs> once you get there and and so many people I think fall into this and say you know I might as well just go back to where I was because at least you know I didn't have it and life was miserable now I have it and life is still miserable why <laughs> bother right yeah yeah exactly which I mean we've kind of been talking about this already but this begs the next question of like what lessons did you learn along the way throughout these transitions I learned the lessons that <laughs> that I am how would I say it I am the cause and the effect right mm -hmm. I am the creator mm -hmm. of my reality uh and it's very powerful because when you take the creation with it with the good and the bad into your own hands you are in charge right mm -hmm. so often like people would say well that's not my fault right what's happening around me it's not my fault what's happening around me i have no influence on i can't change it and and to a certain degree it's it's true but at the same time by making the statement uh that you cannot change it you cannot you know you have no influence on that you're taking the power away from yourself right yeah. So it's, I think this is my, my biggest lesson is really that uh, I do have more power mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. we, than I think sometimes in those situations when we feel powerless, right? Mm -hmm. That there is still place for power. There is place to, to make decisions on your own from the place of, uh, you know, knowing that you are the creator of your reality yeah yeah totally like I we hear the phrase a lot is like you're you're stronger than you think you are you know we hear that a lot in our culture and I I want to amend that because I think my best version of that phrase is you have more power than you give yourself credit for which is exactly what you're talking about here because we can be as strong as we like but we still might be powerless in our strength yeah yes and that's not where we want to be like no matter how strong we are if we don't empower ourselves to do something about it then it's just a bodybuilding competition <laughs> absolutely right uh, absolutely and I think this this also mixes sometimes with control right because we think that maybe control is strength control is yeah. power but it's really yeah. not right it's, yeah, it's a totally. very disempowering uh, way of of living life when we just try to control what comes what doesn't come what we you know like this whole game yeah. it's it's because we are so powerful no matter what comes our way we yeah. can we can handle it if we yeah. just believe that that we have that power in yeah. us totally and I, I think of it more of as like a co-creating relationship too with that yeah. energetic field that we're also mm -hmm. talking about because divine timing is definitely a thing that definitely that affects us in our day-to-day -day lives whether you call it universe whether you call it god whether whatever you want to classify it as but it's, it's this powerful co-creating relationship with our external reality that we need to harmonize with our internal reality and that is where the power is born because you have influence in both realms yeah yeah I love this co-creation and harmonizing mm -hmm. so beautiful mm -hmm. so beautiful so much ease in it too if you really think about yeah. it right yeah 
Yeah, totally. Which begs the next question is like, what kind of practices have you used to support yourself over these periods of time, either mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically? Oh, I am so simple. <laughs> I am so simple. Movement, mm. nourishment. I really, really believe that what we put in our body has a huge impact on our states mental emotional state not just physical state uh, and of course I'm not perfect therefore I know that <laughs> this has an influence and it can impact us one way or the other depending uh, how we nourish ourselves uh, what did I say I said movement nourishment mm -hmm. stillness mm. three big practices uh, and then recently I've been really into reflection, which for me, that's journaling. Mm. Last month, uh, the month of October was like one of the most uh, growth forward months for me. And I realized that this probably came from the fact that I became very committed to my journaling practice mm -hmm. for the past uh, two months and really spent quite a bit of time uh, reflecting on... Um, my mindset, uh, how I, you know, how I approach things, what are the fears that are showing up for me, uh, just, just really turning on that, like, scientist hat almost with my journal and, yeah. and seeing, okay, well, that's interesting that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you have this big thing happening and all of a sudden you're, like, you know, feeling so scared and so powerless and and you know so it's it's been it's been quite amazing because I think it's one thing to run it in our head mm. it slips mm. right and when you see it on paper when you put it on paper you actually could uh see it with so much more clarity where you're looping where you're repeating the patterns where it just makes no sense the mm. stories you tell yourself so mm. so that yeah. reflection piece has been big for me as well yeah, I, I love that you brought that up because self-reflection is huge like you're almost creating a third-party perspective for yourself yeah. on yourself <laughs> yes like you said the scientific approach it's like you're doing a case study on yourself by yourself <laughs> and you can come up with so many fascinating insights and that's really what they talk about when it comes to like mindfulness-based stress reduction and meditation is like having this third-party observational, non-judgmental accepting attitude towards yourself is just so invaluable because you can be like, oh, I see where you're going down that route when this would be a more beneficial route for you. And you can have that almost subjectification of yourself going on, which is a fascinating process. Right. You not become like, like, you're not so enmeshed with, you know, the feelings and the fears and the emotions and the triggers. Like you, you actually able to, you, you self-coach yourself in a way, right? <laughs> because mm -hmm. you get out of the box that mm -hmm. you stuck in and you take a look and, and say, wait a minute, the exit is right there. Why are you still stuck in a box? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's keeping you here? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it also is helpful for at least me personally to understand where my true values are as well Ooh, and what yes. my true desires are as well. Because like we've been talking about throughout this call is like, there's so much external influence on us on a day-to-day -day basis that we often pick up other people's values, other people's desires, other people's wants and expectations for us without actually wanting them for ourselves and that's where that disconnect happens as well and I find that this self-reflective practice is being like oh yeah I actually don't want that status symbol that you're telling me I should want you know yeah. and having that self-knowledge is so instrumental because then I don't waste time chasing after whatever it is when I actually don't want it, which increases the likelihood of fulfillment down the road. <laughs> yes, the likelihood of uh, just having joy, more joy in life, right? <laughs> if you don't waste that energy on things that do not mean anything to you, yeah. right? Which I think we all get stuck in it. And, and some people are more stuck in it. And then, you know, they wonder, why am I so depleted? Why am I so resentful? Why am I, 
just not able to enjoy life anymore. Mm -hmm. And there is the answer because you're not really living your life. You're living mm -hmm. someone else's expectations or agendas and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I cannot say more for self-reflective practices, whether it's journaling or meditating or even like prayer. Some people use that as a self-reflective yeah. practice, like whatever works for you. Absolutely. And, and you know, and it's it's amazing for breaking patterns, right? Like, mm -hmm. like because we all a walking pattern and not all the patterns are serving us. Mm -hmm. They're serving us, but not serving our highest selves. Yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's be realistic. All the patterns we have, they serve some purpose mm -hmm. we don't have anything for no reason as humans but you know I find journaling practice so beneficial with actually catching yourself in the patterns and and being able to like say okay that's it I'm not doing this today today I am actually going to go the opposite way and mm -hmm. if you catch yourself enough times that's it you change the pattern yeah. and once you start seeing the benefits of that new pattern you develop that's more beneficial for you, you, you you're going to go in that direction because all of a sudden there is you know there is the, the carrot is dangling there and the carrot yeah. is good for you yeah it's yeah right candy, carrot yeah 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 we're moving beyond the stick to look at yes. the carrots <laughs> yes yes exactly <laughs> totally totally all right well anything you want to add before we wrap up for today oh uh, it was such a pleasure to chat with you. I honestly, I didn't know that conversation will take us the places it took us. I mean, uh, I love that's, it. That's why I love these conversations. Like I tell everyone, it's an informal conversation. If we get off topic, we get off topic, and that's completely fine. <laughs> but Can't we wait to watch it. Yes. And we talked about powerful stuff, which is just yes. like the sweet spot. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch it and get more of your wisdom in my ears uh, and get some great aha moments because it always happens, right? When you have these good, good conversations, yeah, you don't yeah. even realize that yeah. there is gems hidden yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that's exactly why I publicized this because I was like, I have all these conversations in one-to-one -one meetings and not enough people are hearing the things that we're yeah. saying. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, all right. So this is really powerful stuff that we're talking about today. Per usual, an audience, we definitely encourage you to share your own insights and feelings and lessons and stories with us as well. We'd love to know how transitions have shaped you in your own lives and businesses. Special thanks to Marta again for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you for raising my energy. I feel like a rock star for the rest of the day. Happy Wednesday. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Totally. All right. So please comment, like, subscribe below, check out Linktree slash Claire Joyance for all of my links. And then where can people find you, Marta? People can find me at mindbodyandpurpose.com. My most um, up-to-date place is mindbodyandpurpose at Instagram. And yeah, these are the two places where I hang out the most, my website and my Instagram account. Uh, come and join me. There. Awesome. And I'll put the links in the comments so everyone can easily access them and all that jazz. But until next time, please remember that your authentic self is extraordinary. It is wonderful. And you owe it to yourself to create the elevated life that you know you are capable of. Take care, everyone. Beautiful. Thank you.